The spotlight was on Johannesburg as South Africa hosted the BRICS Summit. The leaders of the group of developing nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, agreed to expand the group and granted membership to six more countries. Now, the summit drew a lot of attention this year because of the geopolitical backlash over the war in Ukraine. BRICS countries have refused to sanction Russia despite the West calling on them to do so. But this year's meeting had a particular focus on Africa and several heads of state from the continent were in attendance. DW correspondent Diane Hawker has more on that. The 15th BRICS summit focused on how the bloc can better cooperate with African states. Notably, two of the six new members are from the continent. Egypt brings with it a sizable economy, Ethiopia a large population. The BRICS members have expressed interest in accessing the African free trade area. The area is not yet active, however, when it is, it will mean that African states will trade with one another with reduced tariffs. African leaders who attended the summit say they're interested in partnering with BRICS, but are wary of being used by external parties. Zambia's president told the summit that BRICS could help with decreasing the cost of borrowing for many African states who are paying high interest rates. Burundi's president told the summit that the country wants help with modernizing its manufacturing sector. China is very active on the African continent, particularly in the area of construction, and South Africa has pointed out that there's a need to create balance in that relationship. And African leaders say they don't only want to trade in commodities, instead they want an equitable skills transfer in areas like the production of biofuels and the creation of solar energy plants. What is clear is that with the addition of six new members, the dynamics within BRICS are likely to change in 2024. And to talk more about what came out of the BRICS Summit this year, we've invited Razia Khan onto the program. She's Chief Economist for Africa and the Middle East at Standard Chartered Bank. Welcome to DW News Africa, Razia. So Ethiopia and Egypt have been invited to join BRICS. We know that there were other African countries who have that same ambition. Uh, how did these two countries make the cut? Thank you, Christine. That is a very good question. And I think to understand this, we need to look at the context of how this grouping came about. It started out earlier on when countries like Brazil, India, China were seen amongst the faster growing economies globally. And the idea was to create something of a non-aligned movement, perhaps a recreation of what had already been there, made up of this grouping of countries that economically were doing that much better, major emerging markets. Now, with the announcement, this signals the first time since 2010 that there has been any agreement, any kind of consensus on an expansion of that grouping. So the question many will have is, what does this ultimately mean for African economies? We know that a lot of what is expressed by the big BRICS grouping. Let's look again at the global financial architecture. Let's ask questions about whether this is actually working for developing mm. countries, actually meeting the needs of developing countries. South Africa has been at the forefront of suggesting that maybe there is a case for reform of the global financial architecture, that when it comes to the very specific needs of African countries, it has been less adept, less capable right. at delivering. And Razia, we know that BRICS countries now have this ambition to, to sort of reduce uh, this Western economic dominance that we have in the global world order. Uh, one of the conversations is that they want to stop using the dollar uh, for trade between BRICS countries. There's been talk of creating a new currency instead of the dollar. It doesn't appear that they've had success on that front. Um, could you start by telling us what is the advantage of not using the dollar to trade and why is that seemingly so difficult to do? Okay, so I think there are two very important different parts to this and it, a, an important distinction that needs to be made. First of all, is this just about facilitating global trade and the greater use of local currencies in that global trade, in that cross-border trade, or is it actually a move against using the dollar? Many of the BRICS economies, let's not forget that with this potential expansion, countries like Saudi Arabia and the UAE 
currently with pegs to the dollar itself are going to be joining this grouping. So the suggestion being put forward is instead of seeing trade and all of the activity, all of the potential benefits that stem from that receding, isn't there another way to organize things where more use could be made of local currencies? So very clear distinction. This is not necessarily a move against the dollar. It's about asking the question and whether there is a more efficient way to be organizing right. international trade, trade between countries. Right. And so, Razia, South Africa's president, Cyril Ramaphosa, said, you know, we want BRICS to help us build infrastructure in Africa. The AU Commission chairperson said BRICS could make Africa more food secure. There seems to be high expectations among African leaders. Can BRICS deliver all of this practically? It's not clear that any one grouping is going to be the solution for all of the region's requirements. What we do know is that there has been a lack of investment within Africa for a long period of time. The perceptions that in a world of higher interest rates, especially higher interest rates in developed markets, that there are somehow greater credit risks associated with investing in African economies, the demand by global investors for what we call higher risk premia. They want to see higher returns if they're going to be taking taking on the risk of putting more money into African infrastructure in a world where the cost of capital is higher. This hasn't necessarily suited the needs of African economies. So I think one of the major thrusts here is to not suggest that the BRICS grouping is going to be the solution on its own to all of that, but to ask is there another way? Are mm. there other ways, perhaps through the multilateral development bank now associated with the BRICS, the new development bank? Is there a way of scaling up finance to a region where the need for that financing is still very great? Right. And just finally, Razia, coming back to this ambition that BRICS countries have to reduce global Western economic uh, dominance, what progress have they made to that effect? Many would argue that it's not about that at all, that this is just down to perception. What it really is, is about seeking ways of increasing cooperation, increasing the amount of trade done amongst these emerging markets. Some of them in the past had been growing very rapidly. That trend has changed. Over a decade of relative emerging markets slow down, we no longer think of South Africa, for example, as an economy that's been doing particularly well. President Ramaphosa himself had outlined very clearly on the eve of the summit that choosing to cooperate more with BRICS, other BRICS economies, doesn't mean that South Africa is retreating in any meaningful way with its cooperation with the rest of the world. This shouldn't be seen as an anti-Western grouping necessarily. It's just about looking to explore whether there are other ways to secure the financing that is needed, to deepen trade, to deepen cooperation with other emerging markets as well. Razia Khan, we appreciate your insights on the program. Thank you very much. Thank you.